Salud to get in that money, get that money, get that cash, get that flow. Hey, get that dinero, get that dinero. Hello, amigos, amigas, amigas. Hello, familia. What is up? How's it going? I hope you are doing fantastic. Today is something that I have been wanting to talk about for so long. And because we don't talk about it enough, I find that people are afraid to ask questions about it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about salary. If you've never seen this before, my name is Greta. I am a product designer slash user experience designer. I live here in New York City. I work in e-commerce and I have been a full-time UX designer for about two and a half to three years. Crazy. So as a UX designer for the past two and a half to three years working in e-commerce, I have been making over six figures for a while now, for a good amount of time. I wanna talk about how I went from point A, which was not making six figures at all, to making over six figures in a very short amount of time, I would say. This conversation really is for any human being on this planet, okay? This isn't just for my, for my homies in tech. This is for anyone because unfortunately we live in a capitalist society and money is literally how we survive. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a timeline to tell you how I got from literally point A to where I'm currently at, which isn't point Z because I'm still trying to, you know, our work is not done yet. We're still trying to level up. Let's rewind a little bit and let's talk about my very first job in UX design or in tech. I started as a volunteer. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, amigos, you heard it right. I started volunteering. <laughs> Literally, when I say I volunteered, it means that I worked for a startup, essentially, that came to be, which is really interesting, it came to be from COVID. I was working on a supply chain web app that essentially would match healthcare administrators that were in need of personal protective equipment or PPE, that's like gloves, masks, ventilators, all that kind of stuff to suppliers of that PPE. There were a lot of health administrators, there were a lot of hospitals, a lot of clinics that didn't have enough equipment to care for the growing number of COVID patients. But yes, I was a volunteer, I made zero dollars. Why did I do it? I realized that because I was so novice, I was so new to technology and UX, I didn't feel confident enough to apply to a paid job at that time. Could I have done so? Probably, I'm sure like someone would have hired me. You know, I was bright eyed, bushy tailed, I was super excited, but I just felt like, you know what, I'm too scared <laughs> to put someone's money on the line and I just wanna learn. So that was zero cash in for Greta. Okay, part two is a startup. Okay, now we're getting our toes wet in actually making money. At this point, I was making about $60,000 a year and I stayed in this job for about three months. Okay, that's it. But I was making money. That did not include healthcare. That didn't include anything at all. I was happy. I was like, oh my God, someone wants to pay me. I was the only UX designer. Okay. Yeah. I did work with a product owner. So that's literally the guy, the person who created the product. I worked with a single developer or software engineer. I worked with a marketing assistant, but this was my first paid job. Okay. Now moving on. This is where things get a little spicy. This is where things get interesting. This is where things start to ramp up. I was hired at my first corporate role in e-commerce. I was so excited. I almost fainted. At the beginning, I was making about 80K total and that was just so much money for me at the time. It is a lot of money, okay? I had like six months of experience in UX and this was my first time working with a team. I was literally working with other UX designers. I was put in a department of like 50 other UX designers. I finally had people who were senior to me. People were at the same level as me or just slightly higher than me. I could ask people for advice, which I couldn't do at my last jobs. So now that we're talking about the big pivot, the epitome of where my actual true career started, which is my corporate job, how did I get from $80,000 a year to over $100,000 a year in the span of probably like a year in three months, which is very, very, very quick. Okay, the first thing I need to say is that your dream salary starts 
before your first day on the job. I'm talking about the base salary that you are offered, the salary that the hiring manager calls you and they say, hey, we love you, we want you, we're gonna offer you $60,000 a year. That base salary that you start off with is the basis for everything at that company because when you start with more money, you end with more money, right? So everything is based off of your starting salary. So if they apply, let's say, a promotion and they give you 5% more salary, they're gonna give you 5% more off of $60,000. Now, if you negotiate and you get yourself to $70,000 as your base salary, then when they give you that promotion or that increase, it's gonna be 5% of $70,000 instead of $60,000. So that can make a huge difference. Now that's where I made a mistake. I made the mistake where I did not negotiate at all. Did I have room for negotiation? Maybe not. Maybe they would have said, I'm so sorry, Greta, but you literally only have six months of experience. This is all that we can offer you at the time. But I never tried. I think I was just so excited, which is normal, especially if it's your first job. I was just so excited. I was like, oh my God, someone wants me. I'm worth something. I have more than $10 to my name. What I'm trying to say is if you can and you think it's appropriate, negotiate as much as you can. It doesn't hurt them, right? It doesn't hurt the hiring manager to give you more money. It literally doesn't affect them. It's okay. You can vouch for yourself and you gotta do it before your first day of the job. Okay, a lot of people ask me when I'm interviewing for a role, when can I ask about salary? When can I talk about it? I feel like a good rule of thumb is the second interview because at that time, if you're invited to the second interview, most likely they want you, they like you, things are going well and you've already buttered them up. And I think at this point you can talk about salary. Another rule of thumb that you can follow is just wait for the hiring manager to bring up the salary themselves. So if they talk about, okay, this role is $70,000 a year, that's your like, okay, ding, 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 she's talking about, or he's talking about salary, let me bring it up, let's chat about it. I will say, make sure if you are going to negotiate salary, please do your research, okay? Go on Glassdoor, go on Indeed, and look up, okay, how much does a, let's say a UX designer who is living in New York City, expected to make, who has six months of experience, how much can I ask for? So take into account your location, the company, your level of experience, your years of experience. All of those factors are super important because they will change how much is reasonable for you to ask for, for your salary. Now that I talked about before you even start the job, let's talk about when I was on the job and I had already started the job, how did I go from $80,000 to over six figures in a very short amount of time? And the answer is baby steps. I didn't go from 80,000 to over 100,000 in one swoop. It was kind of level step by step. The first thing that I did was ask for a raise, okay? So I did this after one year. I think this is a great time after a year, you and your manager, if you have a manager or someone who's superior to you or someone that you report to, you likely have like one-on-one -on -one meetings, you probably work together on a daily basis, and they've gotten to know you at this point. They know your capabilities, they know your work ethic, they know your personality, they know how you collaborate with other people, they know how often you show up to work. And if you really feel like, you know what, I have done a pretty damn good job this year, okay? Then I don't think there's anything wrong with asking for a raise after a year. Before you bring up wanting a raise, I think it's really important that in every, let's say you have one-on-one -on -one meetings, with your manager every week or bi-weekly. And if you don't have these one-on-ones, I suggest setting them up because your manager is the person who's also there to help your career. Before I even talked about like, hey, I want to race. Before I even said that, I often, often, often talked about my future goals. I talked about what I wanted for myself for my career in the future. I was like, oh my God, you know what? As a UX designer entry level, I would love to get to senior level one day. Can you tell me how I can get to that point? And they can tell you, they can be like, okay, so I feel like someone who's a senior level UX designer, they have these qualities, they usually set up meetings themselves, they usually take on a lot of leadership roles, they can give you those tips and then you can just use them and follow them exactly or however you wanna do it and it'll just help you out in the long run. And another benefit to always and constantly talking about what your goals are for yourself for your career is that by the time you sit down with them seriously and you say, hey, I want a raise, it doesn't come as a surprise to them. Whether that's asking for a raise or asking for a promotion, they're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. You've talked about it pretty much 
every time that we meet. And so I understand this is something that you really want. And so I'll see how we can get this done for you. In addition to obviously talking about what you want, in these one-on-ones, you should always talk about what you've done. You don't have to make it sound like super bragging and be like, you guess what I did today. But just make sure you just like sprinkle in little things that you've done. You're like, okay, yeah, I set up this meeting with this external teammate. I reached out to them because I needed more knowledge on this subject and I knew they were a subject matter expert in that area. So I brought them into the meeting. Just talk about things that you've done so that they already know, okay, she's really working to level up her career. Another thing that I did before sitting down with my manager and saying, hey, I want a raise as soon as possible. I didn't word it like that, but kind of in that direction was keep a work log. It's a document where at the end of every single week, you write down every major accomplishment that you had for that week. Let's say I set up three meetings with three different developers and I presented my designs at a huge meeting with a bunch of product designers and a bunch of product managers and the director of UX or whatever it may be. I'll write all of those things that I did down, moments where you had to dissolve a conflict, moments where you had to lead a work session when you didn't have to do that, where you stepped in and helped someone else. That way, when it comes to asking for a raise, when it comes to asking for a promotion, you can go back to that Word doc and you can see all of the freaking amazing things that you've accomplished. Let's say they ask you, why do you think you deserve this raise? Or why do you think you deserve this promotion? You can literally be like, because of this. After I got that raise, you know, we felt good. I felt like, okay, we're moving up. But I was like, you know what? I am not done yet. It had been about a year and four-ish months of me in my entry-level UX design job, UX designer one. I really wanted to apply as UX designer too. Now at my specific company, I know different companies do it very differently. Some companies you can literally just get a promotion and you stay in your current role. But at my company and other companies, you might have to wait for that specific role that you want to open up as a position in your company. And then you have to apply almost as if you were an external hire. And then I had to interview for the position. The one thing I really want to highlight here through all of these stories that I've talked about where I actually talked about my salary is that I was the one who asked for it, okay? You might be one of the very few lucky ones who has a manager that is the one that says, you know what? I think you're due for a raise. I think you're due for a promotion. You work so hard. Even amazing managers aren't gonna be the ones that tell you, you know what, you're due for a raise, okay? If you feel like you are at a point where you deserve more money for the amount of work that you are putting in, or you deserve a higher title and more money for the amount of work that you're putting in, then you need to be the one that says it. The wheel that squeaks gets the oil. And also I wanna say, if there is a job application that says you need three years of experience, Experience. but let's say you have a year and a half of experience, but you think that you can do every single thing that that job application requires that person to do, then girl, go for it. Because that's exactly what I did. They often recommend for UXD2 to have like three-ish years of experience. I had like one and a half and I went for it and they were like, oh my God, of course you're fit for UXD2. Once my manager said, okay, we have a position that's open. You can go ahead and apply. I think you're ready for it. I started over preparing for these interviews. This is something that I think is also helpful for someone who's interviewing for the first time, or if you, again, like me, are interviewing for a promotion. The first thing that I did was write down on a Google Doc or a Word Doc every possible question that I thought they could ask me. I then wrote down my answers in bullet form, and I made sure to write it in this star framework. So the star framework means that you first write the situation that you were in, the task that you were given, the action that you took, and the results that happened as a result of the action that you took. An example is like, let's say you are working with a another designer who is not pulling their weight for a project. So that's the situation. The task that you were given, you had to deliver a new feature by the end of the week. The action that you took is you spoke one-on-one -on -one with the designer to see where things were going wrong and you realized that the designer didn't feel confident in his abilities and what he was tasked to do. What you decided to do is then split the work more evenly or you could be you could be like, well, we collaborated even more than working more siloed. We did work sessions together. As a result, 
the result, we came up with a better design than we could have done individually. So that is the STAR framework to answering questions for interviews. And this, amigos, is where the work log came in so much handy. Is that how you say it? I was able to look back at everything that I did and I was able to pull examples from my work log to answer, to use as examples to answer these interview questions. So often they'll ask you behavioral questions like, tell me about a time that you resolved a conflict. Tell me about a time that you worked with someone difficult and what did you do to resolve it? You can take all of these examples from your work log and use them to answer these questions and it'll be so much easier to prepare for the interviews. And the next thing that was really helpful is that I picked out like four or five major projects that I worked on throughout the year and a half that I was there at my job. I made sure that these projects that I picked were very balanced. So what I mean by that is that they showed very diverse skills. So one project that I did showed a lot of research capabilities that I had. Another project that I did showed how good I was at using Figma or design software. And of course, I practice and practice these questions out loud. Please practice them out loud. Don't just practice them reading them and try to memorize them because you're gonna, you're gonna get tongue-tied that way. And I also reached out to other people on my team and outside of my team who were really nice enough to do like a mock interview with me. And of course, as you can guess, I was promoted. Yes, round of applause, round of applause. I was promoted. I am now UX designer too and I have been for some time. And when I was promoted, of course, that's when I got the biggest bump in my salary. Even when I was promoted, I was able to negotiate my salary just a little bit more and they were able to actually meet me in the middle, which was amazing. So that, amigos, is how I went from $80,000 a year to over six figures in less than like two and a half years. Honestly, this is something that I think is really important Important for us to talk about is important to realize that your base salary is extremely important. It's the basis literally for how much you're going to end up making in the future. It's important to remember that no one is going to negotiate your salary but you. So there's no reason to feel shy about it. There's no reason to feel like you're greedy because at the end of the day, that is what's very important, right? Of course, you want to have a happy and fulfilling job, but what do you take home at the end of the day is your salary and of course, your experiences, but your salary is what can really make or break a job sometimes. That is my chat on salary. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was inspiring. And thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little bit. And I will see you in the next video.